So we're finally going to get into a little bit of circuit analysis here. So we're going to talk about um, KVL and KCL and steady state. Well, the good news is here, and I'll kind of start this, nothing changes. And what do I mean? Well, KVL, remember this is for a loop. We have, and these are going to be all phasor voltages that I'm writing, that if we sum up the voltages in a loop, we get zero, which is still true. Um, but again, I want to emphasize here, these are all phasor voltages. And then KCL, remember that deals with nodes. And the good thing for us, again, is in steady state, if we're dealing with currents entering or leaving a node, remember if we sum up the currents leaving a node, we get zero. And I'll say leaving the node. But of course, remember, there is other ways you can write KCL as well. And I'll just put another one here, is that the current entering equals the current leaving, because that's another one that we use quite frequently. OK, so if that's all there is, well, let, let's just get down to an example um, to see how we would um, do a circuit analysis problem on this. So we're going to look at a very basic circuit here. And my voltage draw sources, that's going to just bother me. There. I know it's silly, it's kind of a silly thing to do. Suppose I should label these. This is a 90 ohm resistor. This is a 32 millihenry inductor. And this is a 5 microfarad capacitor. And that Vs here is given to us as 750 cosine of 5000 T plus 30 degrees volts. Whoops. All right. So the goal of this problem here is to find the steady state current. I. Now, before we can actually start um, doing circuit analysis, I mean, we're going to have to do a phasor transform, but I like to think of this as we're going to do a phasor transform of entire circuit. Okay, so let's do some of the easy ones here. Well, the voltage is going to simply go to 750 at an angle of 30 degrees volts. And then I'll go ahead and write these here. The impedance of the resistor, remember the formula for that is just R, so that's just going to stay at 90 ohms. But we actually have to compute the impedance of the inductor and the capacitor. And so the impedance of the capacitor, or I'm sorry, the inductor, I'm going to do that one first. Remember, the formula for that is J omega L, which would be J. And in this problem, my omega is 5,000. Times my inductance, which is 32 millihenries. And if you do this computation, you get J 160 ohms. 
And then if we do this for the capacitor, remember this is 1 over j omega c, which is the same thing as negative j over omega c. So that's going to be negative j over omega, which is 5,000 times 5 microfarads, which gets you negative j 40 ohms. As a side note here, I haven't mentioned this, um, the impedance of an inductor is always positive and the impedance of a capacitor is always negative. And you can just look at the formulas here. J omega L, um, omega is never negative and L is never negative, so this is always going to be positive, so that's always positive. And then 1 over J omega C, which is negative J over omega C, again omega and C are always positive, so the impedance of a capacitor is always negative. It's actually going to be important for when we get into some discussions on power. Um, all right, so what do we have here? Well, um, I'm just going to redraw the circuit as opposed to scrolling back up and down here. Um, normally what I would do is just relabel my circuit as opposed to redrawing it. Okay, so this is 750 at an angle of 30 degrees. This is now still a 90 ohm resistor. This is J160 ohms and this is minus J40 ohms. Now I'm going to take this kind of a little one step at a time. Um, you probably can start seeing how we're going to be able to just use all of our old circuit analysis techniques um, to solve this, but I'm going to go ahead and write my loop because again I'm trying to find the current. Now of course I'm in phasor mode here, or phasor domain, so I'm looking at the phasor current, but if I do this here I'd have negative 750 at an angle of 30 degrees plus 90 I'm sorry, that's not what I want to write. Plus I mean, I do want to write that eventually, but I wanted to write this plus the voltage across the resistor, plus the voltage across the inductor, plus the voltage across the capacitor is equal to zero. But then, what I want to remind you here, remember, the key thing that we learned in a previous lesson was that in steady state, voltage is always impedance times current in phasor domain. doesn't matter whether it's a resistor, an inductor, or a capacitor. Voltage is always impedance times current. So I'm going to move the 750 to the other side. So my voltage here for the resistor is just going to be my current times 90. Voltage for the inductor is going to be my current times J 160, and then the voltage for the capacitor is going to be plus my current times negative J 40, and this is going to equal 750 at an angle of 30 degrees. All right, but then we can easily see here, we get can factor out an I, and we get 90 plus J 160 minus J40 is equal to 750 at an angle of 30 degrees, which we have I is then 90 plus J120 is equal to 750 at an angle of 30 degrees. Now at this point, again, we have to make the decision on whether to go polar form or to go rectangular form. Since I'm going to be dividing here, I'm going to go ahead and just convert the left-hand side to polar form. So again, I just use my calculator to do that, and I'd get the current times 150 at an angle of 53.13 degrees. And this is equal to 750 at an angle of 30 degrees. So then my steady state current is simply 750 an angle of 30 degrees divided by 150 at an angle of 53.13 degrees. But again, that's easy to do, because remember, what do we do here? We do 750 divided by 150, which is 5 at an angle. 
And then when you're dividing, you subtract it, so it'd be 30 minus 53. So this would be at an angle of negative 23.13 degrees. And then of course we want to write this as my steady state solution. So this would be five cosine. Now remember, frequency never changes. 5000 T minus 23.13 degrees. And so that would be my final, and I should write units here, amps. And that would be my final answer. So we're going to talk some more about circuit analysis moving forward, but you can kind of see that, you know, there's not really anything that's going to be different here. And what you can kind of get a glance at already here is that impedances in series a series impedance they add and so to give you kind of a tiny bit a look ahead if you're in in series just like you would with resistors you just add up the impedances and you can kind of see that's what we did here. We just had 90 plus 160J minus J40. We just added up the impedances to get this equivalent impedance. All right, but that's enough for this video. And in the next video, we're going to start talking uh, more detail about steady state um, analysis and um, doing some more um, problems.